ABC6 South Florida tonight. New tonight, an update on the ailing Fidel Castro. It comes from another world leader considered one of the Cuban dictator's closest allies. Venezuelan President Hugo Chavez is denying reports that Castro has cancer, but Chavez says Castro is fighting, quoting here, a great battle against a serious illness. Castro temporarily handed over power to his brother Raul last July after undergoing what was described then as intestinal surgery. Castro's recent no-show at a planned December celebration of his birthday only heightens speculation about whether his long rule might finally be drawing to a close. Chavez says he spoke to Castro on the phone twice yesterday and said the Cuban dictator was in, quote, good spirits. Live tonight, I'm Carlos Vergara in Little Havana, where the big question tonight is, where are the 16 Cuban refugees which touched American soil early this morning at 3.30? Take a look behind me. They won't be released until, to waiting relatives until they check out here at the county health department. And they have not been here yet. And as you can see, it is lights out and doors locked here tonight. In his native Spanish, Ivan Conesa, like a multitude of other relatives and friends staking out the parking lot at the county health department in Little Havana, asks the probing question, where are they? Nobody told me nothing. Nobody. No police, no immigration, nothing. Nobody. I know he's here in the country, but I don't know where he, where he coming here. The best bet, according to Ramon Saul Sanchez, a leading local pro-immigration advocate, is that they are still being held at the U.S. Border Patrol and will be released due to the U.S. dry foot, wet foot policy. But the wait tonight is perfectly fine for anxious relatives like Mabel Perdomo. I'm happy, very happy, because I don't see my brother around 17 years ago. But the story of seven of the 16 on this morning's boat has been nearly one year in the making. In January, a group of 15 were repatriated after having made landfall on the old Seven Mile Bridge in the Keys, which was later declared not American soil, which led to this second attempt. In a desperate attempt, left Cuba the way they did, and fortunately they made it uh, to the United States alive. Well, folks, behind me just a few moments ago, opening up the door to the Miami-Dade County Health Department, which is a good indication that they may, in fact, be at uh, Border Patrol headquarters in Pembroke Pines and on their way here. In the meantime, relatives still waiting here in the parking lot in good spirits. After a wet Thursday across Broward County, a wet Friday in Miami-Dade, but this evening all across the area so far, very quiet until now. Weather Plus Titan radar showing a lot more shower activity across the Florida Straits and off to our south and west into the Keys and the Gulf of Mexico. A lot of shower activity marching slowly off to the north and to the east. This evening we've been dry, but the radar extra sensitive now, picking up on some low clouds and some developing showers that will move in through the overnight hours. Temperatures are comfortable, though. The sky is mostly cloudy. 74 currently in Miami, 72 in Key West, 71 in Fort Myers. The chilly air locked off to the north, but boy, quite a bit of cloud cover and good lift in the atmosphere. We'll kick off the showers as we head into the overnight hours. Weather Plus True View keeping it cloudy. Spotty showers through the overnight and unfortunately into our Saturday as well. Highs tomorrow should be around 80, but one more day with some wet weather. You can track the wet weather from home right on your desktop. Check out NBC6.net to stream live local Doppler radar. Just kick on the click on the live video box on the right hand of the home page. Jackie? Well, Governor Bush suspends all executions in Florida after the botched lethal injection of convicted killer Angel Nieves Diaz. The medical examiner determined Wednesday's execution took 34 minutes, twice as long as usual, and required a rare second dose of lethal chemicals because the needles were improperly inserted. Mr. Bush, along with Governor elect Charlie Crist want to ensure the process does not constitute cruel and unusual punishment. And word tonight that another South Floridian has lost his life in the war in Iraq. Private Roger Suarez Gonzalez from Miami was killed in Ramadi, shot at while conducting security operations there. Suarez Gonzalez was just 21 years old. And I'm Steve Litz, live in Northwest Miami-Dade tonight, where homicide detectives are working two murders, both happening in this part of town. They responded first to a home back here at about 10.30 last night. That is where one man was killed. And then at about 2 o'clock in the morning, they had to move to a second location. Two fatal shootings in Miami Gardens, and they happened within hours of each other. Pauline Gabrielle lived in this home on 202nd Street. Somebody shot him while he sat in his car outside his home. 
Taven Hatcher is the second victim, and he was shot about three hours later at this home on 184th Terrace. John Salgado and Molly Johnson were Hatcher's aunt and uncle. I can just remember him being a little boy. I used to take care of him when he was little, you know? So, you know, it, it just don't feel like this has even happened. Hey, everybody loved him. You know, everybody came over here, they come spend time, watch movies, play video games with him. That's the type of person he was. Witnesses say the gunman actually stormed into Hatcher's guest house and shot him while he was in bed. Pauline Gabrielle's murder also happened at his house. He owned Nice Cuts International Barbershop in North Miami. He got home about 10.30 last night and was shot several times while sitting in his car in his driveway. This man, a friend of Gabrielle's family, told us Gabrielle's two sons were in the house when their father was murdered. Just so sad to see him going like that and knowing that he's a good family. You know, he's, he's the whole community know him as a good person. and. For somebody to come here and kill him, take his life, it's like really, really bad, you know. That man right there, a friend of Paul, uh, Pauline Gabrielle, he didn't want you to see his face, but he did want you to hear him talk about his friend. Right now, investigators are not saying as to whether these two murders are connected or not. And right now, no suspects are in custody. New information tonight in the case of a Pepsi truck driver who shot in the stomach at a Broward gas station. According to BSO, Paul Menino was making a delivery in Fort Lauderdale when an armed man demanded his wallet. Menino complied but was shot anyway, police say. He was taken to the hospital and is expected to be okay. Police say the gunman and an accomplice took off in a white pickup truck with an extended cab. The gunman is described as a young black male with short cropped hair, last seen wearing a white T-shirt, long blue shorts, and white tennis shoes. If you have any information, please call Crime Stoppers at 954-493-TIPS. A possible new lead tonight in the death of University of Miami football player Brian Pata. Police in Boston say they've arrested 19-year-old Jerome Brody, the brother of Pata's girlfriend, in connection with a deadly shooting in that city. The Boston Globe is reporting Miami authorities want to question Brody, but so far Miami-Dade police will not confirm that. Still, if you know anything about the Pata case, please call Miami-Dade Crime Stoppers again at 305-471-TIPS. A man is sentenced to seven life terms plus 15 years for robbery for raping a woman in front of her children. Police say Michael Siebert is the Palmetto Bay rapist who attacked women in daycare center parking lots and forced them to look at their children during the assaults. In court today, the victim, whose face we are not showing, spoke about the effect the ordeal has had on her children. Michael Seibert repeatedly threatened to kill my daughter with a knife and to drown our family by sinking our van into the canal near where he parked it to rape me. Although my daughter is a beautiful, smart little girl, she carries within her the constant reminder of how dark and terrifying her world can be. Seibert, who proclaimed his innocence, also said he wasn't happy with his attorney. The judge ordered him to serve out his life terms consecutively. Two months after activists set up a homeless camp in Liberty City to protest local affordable housing scandals, the Miami City Commission is trying to close the camp. Commissioners say some residents fear their children could be exposed to drugs or sexual predators. Commissioners have already reworked permit laws for public assemblies, but must vote again in January for it to become final. Tonight is the first night of Hanukkah, the Jewish Festival of Lights. Synagogue and individual families lighting the first candle on the menorah. This one's in front of the Hallandale Beach City Hall, and they'll repeat the ceremony over the next eight days. The holiday celebrates the victory of the Maccabees and their struggles in ancient times. New tonight, I'm Tom Yamas with the hottest salsa band at the hottest party in South Florida, the grand opening of the Havana Club. A playground for professionals. Welcome to the Havana Club. Miami's new social club for the elite. The whole function of this club is meant to be a high-level networking club where people can interact and meet people. 90% of the business I did in the last 10 years of my life is from dealing in a club similar to this out of New York. Members enjoy a variety of benefits, including first-class service, private dinners, a private bar, private parties, and free transportation. You can sit here, have dinner, the club provides limousine service to go to a performing arts show, go to a basketball game. 
The club also features a private cigar lounge sponsored by Macanudo Cigars. They can expect a great time. They can expect to experience the cigar lifestyle. So they can come in, relax, enjoy a great Macanudo cigar, relax, and have a good time with their friends. The Havana Club founders say you'll find only the best at the club located in downtown Miami, starting with the club's view, 55 floors above the Magic City. The bar also boasts some of the best alcohol in the world, including the most expensive whiskey, scotch, vodka, rums, and wine. Also the finest selection of cigars, including a mahogany locker room full of 800 private humidors. I think, it's, um, I think it caters to the market that we have in Miami. I think it caters to a lot of our international uh, market. I think it's going to be a great meeting place uh, for a lot of people to come and, and right now have the best view of, of Miami uh, from this location. So the big question tonight, how much does it cost to join this exclusive club? Well, I took out one of the application forms and I looked inside. It's $5,000 to join and $300 a month. So as the old saying goes, if you had to ask, you probably can't afford it. The storm of the decade hits part of the U.S. Will the weekend get any better? Then why a judge is ordering a pregnancy test in connection with the Duke lacrosse scandal. Also ahead, some high-tech gifts for the person on your list who loves to travel. And oh my stars, Beyonce says she has an alter ego. What? We'll explain coming up on <laughs> South Florida Tonight. <laughs> From the NBC6 family to your family, all the best this holiday season. The spirit of South Florida, NBC, the spirit of South Florida. Developing tonight, an announcement about the woman who was going to publish O.J. Simpson's book. Judith Regan was fired today by HarperCollins. A statement released from the company simply says... Regan's employment's been terminated effective immediately. The firing comes less than a month after the cancellation of Simpson's book and TV interview titled If I Did It, in which he reportedly speculated about the murder of his ex-wife and Ron Brown and how he'd commit it. Hurricane force winds and driving rain have pummeled the Pacific Northwest. This past week alone, three massive storms have struck the region. Last night was the most severe. It was the worst storm to hit the Pacific Northwest in more than a decade. Record rainfall and wind gusts topping 100 miles per hour, leading to massive destruction. The storm wiping out power to more than a million and a half residents across the region. At least four people have been killed. And a very, very long winter before winter's begun. Christina Watt barely escaped when this 140-foot tree collapsed on her home. I ran out of the room screaming into the kids' room and there was this huge loud noise and the tree went literally right through the house where I was sleeping. This is what her bedroom looks like now. If I hadn't gone in to check on them, I don't think I'd be standing here talking to you right now. Emergency managers are warning residents to be ready for an entire weekend without power. If we had 100,000 generators, we could probably sell them all. As many search for essentials to weather the storm. Forecasters are predicting a break in the bad weather over the weekend. The storms have greatly hindered rescue efforts for three people missing in Oregon for almost a week now. They were climbing up Mount Hood. Officials are planning a massive push to find the men once the storms subside. Now to other stories making headlines across America. We begin with a splashy send-off for the only two-time defense secretary at the Pentagon today in Washington, a farewell for Donald Rumsfeld. President Bush called Rumsfeld someone who knows how to lead, and the vice president said the 74-year-old is the finest Secretary of Defense this nation has ever had. Rumsfeld's resignation was announced the day after the Democrats won control of Congress last month. The new Defense Secretary, Robert Gates, takes over on Monday. In Durham, North Carolina, more intrigue and new questions surrounding the Duke lacrosse rape case. A judge ordered a paternity test on a baby expected by the woman who claimed she was raped by three lacrosse players. News of the accuser's pregnancy comes roughly nine months after the team party where she says she was attacked. But both the district attorney and defense lawyers reject any possibility that any of the players is the baby's father. And in Atlanta today, a name revealed. The baby panda cub at the Atlanta Zoo was named Mei Lan, which is Chinese for Atlanta beauty. The name was chosen from more than 57,000 online voters. Mei Lan was born 100 days ago. She is the only panda cub born outside China this year. 
And a cloudy but dry evening across Broward County. Live weather plus Doppler radar sweeping clear for the time being. But that will soon change as we get into the overnight hours. Quick check across Miami-Dade County. Quiet as well. But again, the clouds widespread. Temperatures are fairly comfortable into the 70s. But here we go across the Keys and Florida Bay. We continue to see the showers moving in. Now, so far over the course of the last few days, we finally got our first good rain of the month. About a half inch now for the month in Key West. For the year, doing pretty well. Only about two and a half inches behind. We're actually ahead in Miami by about four and a half inches. So far this year, 68 inches of rain. And some of those have come during some very uh, wet afternoons. That's for sure. This month, about an inch of rain so far in Miami, but the big loser at this point, Fort Lauderdale behind by about 16 and a half inches for the year. Even though we've picked up an inch over the course of the last few days, we still have a lot of catching up to do tonight. As I said, mostly cloudy skies, but temperatures not bad. 75 in Fort Lauderdale, 74 in Miami at 72 in Kendall, 70 tonight in Homestead. Clouds are widespread. Showers are moving in slowly but surely across the Gulf of Mexico. Another piece of energy off to our south and to our west will pull across the peninsula through the overnight hours, giving us another round of rain that will likely last into our Saturday morning. So here's one piece of energy moving off towards us, but yet another piece out across the Gulf of Mexico, slowly creeping off to the east. Now this upper level low, not all that strong, should lift off to the north, but it'll help to increase the rain chances as we progress through our Saturday. Did not see much sun on our Friday. I think we may see a little bit of sunshine tomorrow. Temperature still at or above average, but the rain shower chance is still with us. Stationary boundary will set up very weak at that to our south, so it'll still be a focal point for some showers. So those chances will continue for the first part of our weekend. But then as high pressure builds to the north, drying out with more sunshine, and that should set us up for a nice weather pattern that will last into the first half of next week. Tonight, cloudy and mild. As I showed you on Doppler radar, those showers will be moving in slowly from southwest to northeast. Our overnight low, 68 northwest winds at about 5 to 10 miles an hour. As we get into tomorrow, though, the winds will shift to the northeast, if not easterly, by late into the day. 10 mile an hour winds with partly sunny skies. Scattered showers just keep the umbrella handy with highs near 80. Wind problems not for the boaters this time around like we had last weekend. 5 to 10 knot wind seas at 2 feet. Your 6 day forecast getting better as we go. More sunshine towards the tail end of the weekend and a very nice start to next week with highs into the lower 80s. Hanukkah has arrived, and at the stroke of midnight, just nine days until Christmas, so have you finished all your holiday shopping? If not, consumer reporter Joel Cottable is here to show us some cool gifts for travelers. I have not bought Christmas gifts for, but if they're travelers, Four. we have... <laughs> We will have much more on the survival guide, which we're all going to need. We'll get to that right after the break. Closed captioning is brought to you in part by Palmetto Ford. Why buy your truck from a car store? Palmetto Ford, your truck superstore for over 40 years. Give us a try before you buy. 305-592-Ford. Now to those yeah. holiday gifts. Let's go to Joe Carnival. Hi, everyone. If you're like me, you probably have a few friends on your Christmas list that you haven't bought holiday presents for. Well, we have a few ideas, especially if they're travelers. Take a look at this. This is a wireless weather forecaster. This is from Brookstone.com. It costs about 85 bucks. Gives you a four-day forecast. Tells you today's weather. There's also an alarm clock. Said rain, and we had rain, so it actually works. Then take a look at this. This is a tranquil moment sound system. It's an alarm clock. You can take it anywhere you go. And if your friend has trouble sleeping, they can listen to soft uh, sound effects like uh, white noise and rain and all sorts of other things. You can even record your own. Good morning. Good morning. That good morning. That might be a little bit annoying. Morning, but anyway, this one goes for $99. And once again, it's from brookstone.com as well. How about a travel pillow? This is less than 20 bucks. It actually comes in a kit with uh, earplugs and eye mask. Great for the airplane. Just put it around your neck. You inflate it and it easily stows away and great in the car as well. Just a good way to relax for someone who flies a lot or drives a lot. And this is the new hot item this year that you'll see a lot of people wearing. Noise canceling headphones. These things are from brookstone.com. They're 250 bucks, so a little bit more expensive, but they're such good headphones that when you listen to your iPod or to your MP3 player or just nothing at all, it zones out the sounds and helps you make sure you don't hear all those screaming people that you would normally hear sitting next to you on an airplane. Tumi has this. This is a universal power adapter kit, has all the plugs you could possibly need for your computer, your cell phones, your iPods, everything like that. And finally, this, also from Tumi, 
This is really first class luggage. This is one of the best carry ons around. This is the Tumi 22 inch transporter. It comes with a special handle here, so it's ergonomic and it won't hurt your wrist while you're rolling it. This is exactly what airplanes want you to use. This one's expensive as well, $495, but really the best of the best when it comes to luggage. Hey, if you'd like to see any of these items, we have them on our website. Just go to NBC6.net, click on the departure lounge. You'll see them right there. We have links to brookstone.com and Tumi.com. So happy shopping, everyone. I'm Joel Conable, South Florida Tonight. And if you need more holiday advice, NBC6.net, your one source for a lot of ideas, recipes, family activities, decorating. Just log on for all that and more on our website and click on holidays. Well, hundreds of you took some time today to give to South Florida children in need this holiday. We showed it to you live on NBC6 all day. We do want to thank you for participating in the Caravan of Joy. We received thousands of new toys at our sites in Miramar and Hialeah. The Caravan of Joy will bring these toys to charities next week, and they will then be distributed to children before Christmas. Oh, my stars. George Clooney hoping his charm and fame will bring attention and action to an important cause. The actor went to the United Nations today to brief officials on the crisis in Darfur and in the Sudan. He says there are now two and a half million refugees and relief workers being kicked out, making the situation even more dire. More than two 200,000 people have been killed in Darfur in the past three years alone. This may look like Beyonce, but it could actually be Sasha. Beyonce says she becomes someone else on stage, an alter ego who she's named Sasha. The 25-year-old told Parade Magazine that she wouldn't like Sasha if they met off stage, saying, quote, she's too aggressive, too strong, too sassy, too sexy. I'm not her in real life at all. And they both look great to me. And Rosie O'Donnell at a bowling alley at sea sounds like a good time. Right. While the talk show host was in South Florida to christen the Norwegian Pearl, the newest ship for Norwegian cruise lines. Joining Rosie, South Florida children who have benefited from The View, host Rosie's For All Kids Foundation. The Miami Heat are one of many suitors interested in trading for Allen Iverson. But as of right now, the Sixers guard is still up for grabs. Too bad for Miami because the Heat really could have used him tonight. Dwayne Wade back at home while his team visits Washington. Wade still recovering after getting his wisdom teeth removed. Shaq still out with that knee injury. And for the second straight game without their stars, the Heat started out in the big hole. Down big with a chip away. James Posey's three put him down 17. Later in the third, Posey again from downtown. Heat within six. Then they make it three, thanks to another three from Posey. He had seven on the night. Posey, well, he also has good manners. Sharing with his buddy Alonzo Morning, Zoe slams it home. But Miami's not the only team that can shoot the three. Antoine Jameson dialing long distance. Wizards back up by seven. He tried to keep it close. Gary Payton lays one home. Miami's within five, but that's as close as they would get. The Heat lose 106 to 95. Posey with the season high 26 points. Jason Williams also sat this one out. Miami now 0 6 the last six games without him. When you're without, you know, three starters, you know, basically, I mean, you know, you're going into a rotation of guys that never really play that much. And, uh, and you hope that you're going to get some big games out of you know, some of the other guys. You're going to need them. All right, football. The Dolphins looking to even their record at 7-7 seven and seven and even the score against the Bills with a win up in Buffalo on Sunday. Miami lost the first meeting against their AFC East foes, but that was way back in Week 2, and a lot's changed since then. The Dolphins are better, having won five of their last six games. And so are the Bills. They've won four of the last six. So Miami also with a different running back. Ronnie Brown out with an injury, so Sammy Morris gets the start. And he certainly wouldn't mind sticking it to his former team in Buffalo. It's going to be a tough game. And, um, you know, again, it's, it's my, my old team. And, uh, you know, I mean, you want to, you know, beat them first of all just because it's, you know, it's our next opponent. Uh, but at the same time, you know, I haven't been able uh, to win a game uh, in Buffalo yet. Uh, you know, so I, I think that would be nice. Well, have you made your New Year's Eve plans yet? The Miami Hurricanes have. They're going to Boise, Idaho. Not your number one New Year's destination, but new head coach Randy Shannon isn't complaining. Shannon held his first practice today as the Canes get set to take on Nevada in the MPC Computers Bowl. Athletic director Paul D. said he hopes that freshly fired head coach Larry Coker will give it one last try in Boise, but Coker has yet to publicly accept or decline that offer. All right, the Marlins will have a new man in charge next season, but manager Freddie Gonzalez is already getting to know the community. The South Florida native visiting an elementary school in Miami today where the kids showed off their sweet dance moves. You got to see those. There they are. And they also got some toys from the Marlins. And that'll do it for sports. We'll be right back after this break.
it was more than a dream tonight at the Weston Diplomat Hotel in Hollywood to benefit the Juvenile Diabetes Foundation. Our own Lonnie Quinn and Joel Conabel, who deals with diabetes every day, were there to MC and greet the crowd. There was entertainment at an auction, all to help pay for diabetes research. And it's all the weekend's upon us. How's the weather going to be? Well, unfortunately, the shower's moving in right now. They'll likely carry into tomorrow morning. Tomorrow, keep your umbrellas handy, but improving by Sunday and Monday, Tuesday next week, a lot better. So do your Christmas shopping tomorrow and then get outside on Sunday. And, of course, the heat then get Woo. Dwayne Wade back. That is good news. They need a Hanukkah miracle without him and Shaq to win tonight. <laughs> very much. I, well, it mess. could happen, that's yeah, for sure. True. He'll be back Saturday. And then you think about the Dolphins, what might have been if they'd have just come out of the gate a little quicker. Two straight years, that's the worst part yeah. about it. All They'll right. figure it out next year, right? We hope. Right? Hopefully, we yeah, hope, that, right? that's what's going to happen. All righty, everyone. That'll be the news for tonight. As always, a pleasure, and as always, wishing you and yours a great weekend, a great holiday, and a great year. Can I just say it's been a real honor to work with you, yeah, Michael Williams? Pleasure working with all of you guys, too. Have a great evening, everyone. That's it for us. The NBC 6 News at 11. Thank you, as always, for watching. And remember, for news and weather and sports information, 24 hours a day, just log on to NBC6.net. The Tonight Show is next. Have a good night, everyone. Good night. NBC6 is South Florida's news leader. Join Kelly Craig and Ryan Phillips tomorrow morning for Today in South Florida. And for news 24 hours a day, visit us on NBC6.net.